Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here. We are back with Court Arms Gates for Osfront and we are looking at content update 5 but what gets added for the Russian forces. So the Russians get even more than the Germans, they get a hell of a lot and a lot of uh, variation. So we'll jump straight into it. I will say that Pugger Reborn, good guy, me and him did a joint video on his channel about content update 5. Get over there, he does a really good in-depth look at all the mechanics and the units <coughs> and conquest as well. So it's fantastic. Definitely get over there and check him out. So we'll start here at the base. We have the brand new. Yag 1029K, as you can see here, it's basically this 76mm gun here, but it's on the vehicle. It's pretty damn good, you get quite a lot of shells, you get 20 armor piercing, 20 HE, 4 more HE and 4 more armor piercing, you get 24 of each because one's loaded in. It's got pretty good um, mobility, like you can move it up and down. It's basically, imagine, a bit like an 88mm but on a truck, but not as powerful. Gives the Russian a nice mobile kind of fire support one. It can also, uh, this was discovered by on Pugo's channel, you can fire straight through the front of the cab, <laughs> which is quite funny. It doesn't kill the driver, as we can see here. His gun's going straight through, so it's quite powerful there. A little bit overpowered, that'll get fixed soon. But yeah, nice little addition, but it's very lightly armoured, and it's very open. So yeah, there's no gun shield, which is a bit of a shame, so you've got to definitely watch out for that. But yeah, nice addition to the forces. We also have basically the same here, uh, with the, it's the, this is the 76 38 which is the exact same gun, I believe. A slightly the modern variant of the gun, it might have a bit more pen, but basically it carries a lot more HE rounds instead of our person. But as you can see, very mobile. And the range of this thing is it's quite far, it's about 200 and just 200, so the same as a Flak AA. So it's very good for reaching out and touching targets, and it's the exact same with this beast as well. So it gives you some really long range firepower, which is great. But yeah, very simple ones. And we have the new stewards. Now, I can't remember which model is the new one. I think it's the late model. But we'll have a look at both of them. They are fantastic stewards, as you can see. This one is the... This is the early one. It doesn't have those side machine guns. But you do have two brown machine guns and a 37mm. Comes with a hell of a lot of ammunition as well, which is fantastic. 41 AP, 84 AG. It's quite like... As you see now as well, you have the turret armor and the hull armor separated. It's pretty well armored for a light tank. It can take some hits. Remember those machine gun points just have been sealed up so there's no weak points there, which is fantastic. There's a good little vehicle, very nippy at 58 speed, so I'm a big fan of the Stewart. Great little light sport tank, it looks fantastic as well. Beautiful vehicle, really cool looking. We also have the Stewart Late, which obviously comes with these side machine guns as well. These are the, these basically the same as the other, but it has the side machine guns, as you can see. They seem a bit more um, controllable than they do in the Mace mod, and they can absolutely shred. So you got to imagine you've got four 30 caliber machine guns, and a main gun firing all at the same time. It does have the exact same main gun as the other one, but it's absolutely fantastic, and as you can see, that is a hell of a lot of rounds. You can just hold the trigger, and it's good. You can see if you get a walk out of the tower, I think. Yeah, it's a lot of firepower, so that's really good. I think the stewards are really good light tank, so it definitely encourages you to move down the level of line a lot more. Next, we have the Sherman. This is the M4 A2 early variant. And it's just a new variant to the early one. It's got a fairly decent gun. It's got good frontal arm. The Sherman's with a slope frontal arm actually having better frontal arm than the Tiger. It parries a lot of ammunition. 59 HE, 38 armor piercing. Obviously, a ton of machine gun ammunition. You also have the best thing about the Sherman, in my opinion, the 50 caliber, which is just filthy. As you can see, shreds through targets. Very accurate. And it can rip through light vehicles as well. It's absolutely these, these things would be deadly. So you've got two 30 calibers, a 50 caliber and a 75mm main gun, which is fantastic. The Sherman's definitely a buy, and in my opinion, it's a great tank to have. It looks good in that camouflage, apart from the star, actually, the US star in it. <laughs> but yeah, really, really cool. I do like the Sherman, it's a beautiful model. They've done a really good job at modeling these, especially with the gunners and everything. It looks really like, natural, it looks fluid. Next, we have the new late model, which I believe is that major muzzle brake on the gun. I believe this is the stronger variant of the main gun, 76mm. I don't believe it's as strong as the Firefly, the British version, but it's still pretty tough. But you've got different types of ammo, as you can see that Sherman, you just had standard. This has armor piercing, blast cap rounds, HE, and it's also got smoke launchers included, which is fantastic, as you can see here. It's a turret mounted smoke launch, which is great. But I believe it has a pretty the pretty quick reload time on the smoke, so as you can see, you can pop another one. So it's very cool. Gives you, I believe you get, you get 18 of them, or 14 of them all together. And once again, you've got the main gun. 230 calibers and that 50 caliber. Um, for some reason he's not using it. Oh, I think I'm I think it's um, I'm lacking a gunner because <laughs> it's a six man crew on this one. So yeah, you just need if I use the 50 caliber, you've got to have another man in it, which is fine. 
So it's a six-man crew, I didn't realise that. So it's a lot of crew in there, but really good vehicle. And the armour is, I believe, is slightly better on the turret, and it does have some uh, different extra armour and stuff as well. And its lowest armour tier is up, so a little bit more armoured, which is great. Makes it a little bit more survival and real assured, so I think it's a great buy. And this is the tank plug I was really excited for, the M3 Lee. Um, it's ugly, but it's actually pretty damn good. So as you can see, it's got pretty good armour. It's full armour, it's 50.8 instead of the turret. It's a fairly early port for early tank as well, early medium tank, so you get quite quick. It has, so it's got a 37mm gun, it's got a 75mm hull mounted gun, which is pretty quick on the reload. A 30 calibre on the coaxial. We've got a hull mounted 30 calibre, which is definitely more forward facing. And then you have this little anti aircraft to it, Ruler MG, which is fantastic. It's very safe to use, you can shred it through this. So this thing comes with a lot of firepower. It also has a lot of ammunition, you get 70 AP rounds for 37 and then some HE rounds. 20 armor piercing for the hull gun and a fire one off, so I think it's 30 HE. You also get a ton of machine ammunition. And it's pretty nippy as well, the speed is 42, so it's pretty nippy around. It brings a hell of a lot of firepower right, and one armor chassis. But the fact that you have that whole main gun as well, which is actually a lot better than the French one as well, it's a lot more powerful. Puggo was testing it out on his channel. It ripped through a Panzer IV and the Stugi. So this thing can penetrate light and medium tanks at about 100 meters quite well. So yeah, you've got a lot of firepower in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic vehicle. Definitely want to use it, it's just a bit ugly. And next we have these. Well, these have basically been added to the Katusha line. And you have to get these before the Drusha, which is the big 12 launching 30 millimeter uh, artillery piece but um it's um yeah you get four in this one and eight in this one and all it is is a 30 30 centimeter basic katusha style rocket it's very accurate though but it does a hell of a lot of damage my god where have they in this i think we'll try and aim these a bit better the only bad thing about adding these to the game on the conquest tree it makes it even harder to get to the last katusha but they do have a good range, I think it's about 270, 260. We're trying to aim this a bit better this time. There you go. So it should be a bit more accurate. There you go, you can see. Pretty accurate. But these obviously are static, which means they're really vulnerable. Yeah, it's four men on each crew. They do carry a lot of ammunition in each one, which is great. They both have 16, which means you're going to go through ammo pretty quick there on the big one. It's just really vulnerable. The reload time is pretty slow as well. I'm not a big fan of these just because they're so static. I personally prefer to have the Katushas on tracks or mobile stuff. But still, something a bit different. And they do look cool. It reminds me a bit of the Japanese kind of rocket launching systems that they had, which were very kind of just on the stand. Simple and effective. But it does make it more difficult to get to the, uh, here's the Andrusha, which is the base of the 12, 12 missile rocket variant, which is on the truck. But, you know, hey ho, still. Lots of firepower available, which is great. Next, we have the BM. 848 Z6, which has 48 rockets on a rack. So, this is. Pugger actually tested this out on his channel once again. Go watch his video. They're very light rockets, which I'm not a big fan of. They're not as strong, but you do get a lot. So, it's quite good for carpet bombing. So, for instance, here. As you can see, you're firing two silos of 24 as well. So you pop it. But it's not as actually effective as the larger rockets, but it's quite good for a suppression fire weapon. But it's not too expensive to get on the research tree as well, it's a bit less down the line than these bigger ones. It still has its place and it comes with a lot of ammunition. It comes with a full backup of 48, so you get basically two massive 48 salvos of rockets. And it reloads pretty quick actually, we notice, for the Akatusha system, so that's pretty good. And lastly but not least, we have basically a T60 with a rack of 24 rockets on the back now this thing is even more inaccurate we found but we tried to use it as a direct fire weapon as well and it didn't really work we're going to try and see and as you can see you get the little armor t60 chassis which i think is great it means it's a lot more survival than the truck it's got quite decent little sloped armor but it does have no mg or anything to support but you do have 48 rockets in reserve which is quite good and as you can see you can just it's still fairly nippy it's not the fastest thing but if you get onto a road you can push it around pretty quick as you can see here we're advancing forward, and all you have to do is take aim and fire. The fire is each rack of the group at all, but it's pretty good. But it's just the rockets are a bit underwhelming. The bigger stuff just tends to be better. The 30 mil will take out tanks and everything, whereas these lighter katushas just aren't as strong anymore. But they do have the place. I'd say some people prefer the um, 
the smaller rockets and more of them to the large rockets and less quantity over quality I guess. But yeah, the Russians have got some really cool stuff. My personal favourite out of this is the Stuart. I don't know, Pluggos is the M3, but I'm also a big fan of the T60 just because it looks really cool. And we did notice when you're firing at them, you can actually knock the um, launcher with armor piercing around, so you can disable the launcher and then potentially get up to the vehicle, disable it, and then steal one. So good for the Germans and Finns if you want to steal one of these as a support weapon. They are a bit pricey in Conquest, though, they're about, I think about 800, 900 points, which is a hell of a lot for a T60 with a rocket. Uh, strapped to it but you know they're trying to balance it I guess anyway I hope you found that useful I enjoyed bringing it to you thanks for watching everyone and I will see you probably over the next couple of weeks just on whatever and then in about a week and a half liberation drops and yes you will be getting lots of US German fighting goodness as we start new campaigns new tutorials and Sergio the Bean with my voice back but still a bit raspy enters the next stage of the Ostfront game which is going to be fantastic anyway thanks for watching everyone you guys have a fantastic day and take it easy